welcome to the Baskopedia podcast with, I'm your host, Mark Hart, and today I have Coach Glenn Hicks. Uh, Coach, how is everything going out there in Alabama? It is hot and humid. Or are you in Georgia? Are you in Alabama or Georgia right now? I'm, well, I'm right here in the Georgia-Alabama corner. I coach in, I live in Georgia, but coach in Alabama. So, uh, but it's hot and humid here. Before we get to the basketball stuff, is it War Eagle or Roll Tide? It is War Damn Eagle. Okay. <laughs> well, we just got to make everybody, let everybody know who you are in SEC country, right? That's it. <clears throat> um, Coach, you want to tell our listeners um, a little bit about your background? I, I, know you've, I know you've ran the system for a long time. Um, do you want to just kind of tell us how, how that came about, that maybe you I know you probably didn't run it the whole time, but but how you became a system coach? Well, the first uh, first twelve years we were a uh, we 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 kind of we were a I guess an opportunity break team. Uh, you know, we tried to run on misses and you know steals and and, and things such as that. But we were more of the uh, half court um, man to man in your face. We're not going to switch. We're very 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 physical. And uh, I'll be honest, uh, I got to where I, I hated going. Got to where I hated going to practice, and the kids did too. Uh, and uh, I was on the verge of getting out of coaching and going into administration. Um, and uh, had a uh, assistant, a former assistant coach that was a head coach in our county that uh, had seen Westhead at a clinic and called me and said, "Man, this is something you need to look at." He brought it to me, and I. I the, the the clinic notes and I looked at it and I said, man, this crap ain't going to work. <laughs> and the more I got to thinking about it, uh, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, what the heck, you know, let's, let's give it a try. And I was sitting here one Saturday and just on the, uh, my dad-in-law told me, said, uh, I was talking about, it, he said, well, why don't you just call coach Westhead? And, you know, I'm crazy enough to try something like that. I actually called, uh, uh, information in Los Angeles and he was listed and I called him and his wife told me that he was gone and that she'd have him call me back. And I thought, well, you know, I'll, that, that's it. You know, I'll never, never hear from him. But he called me back that night and we talked for about three hours. Oh, wow. Gave us every, gave us everything that they did. Sent me game film, sent me diagrams, sent me, uh, he, I mean, he, he would, they were just, uh, at that time, us and they said one other school in South Dakota was was running a form of the system, and uh, it was so it was so neat. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's just like we had our own hotline. Uh, you know, if, if something was bothering us, uh, you know, we we were just we just called Loyola, and uh, you know, within the next and within a couple of hours, somebody called me back and gave us an answer. And uh, what well, the 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 years that we were really cooking in '90 was the uh, uh, first year that we we averaged '98 in uh, uh, '90, and every Monday uh, about lunchtime, either uh, Coach Woods or Coach Prada, one of the assistant coaches, would call and ask how we'd done the week before, and then, you know we just. Uh, we went from there and we, we've done some tweaks and, um, you know, to kind of fit what, you know, I, I told young coaches, you know, I've had three guys. Uh, I had a three guy that was a uh, three sport all state player that ended up pitching for the Boston Red Sox. And then I've had one that couldn't have made the team playing for somebody else. So I think it's a great system <clears throat> that you can, uh, kind of tweak around and, and, and mold it to fit what you've got. Uh, you know, I've had all state point guards. I've had guards that uh, couldn't score, uh, you know, with a pencil, but uh, had great post players and played with a five out. So we, we've, we've kind of run the gambit since 1988. Do you do the press back to the zone or do you do, do you do full like pure <clears throat> head system or do you kind of hybrid? We, you know, we're we're 32 minutes full court pressure, and probably played. 
we probably play maybe, and, you know, like I said the other night now, we, we get the game, we, we think we're going, if we got a chance to beat you playing a 2-3 zone, we're going to back up in a 2-3 zone and play you after we press. But most of the time, we're half court man, run, run and jump. We do a, uh, we do a lot of, uh, well, I, I, we call it run and jump. It's more run and trout. And so, so um, it, it basic, we start out man to man, and basically it ends up in a zone. Shot clock or no shot clock for you guys? No shot clock. So do you get stall ball employed against you a lot, or no? No, or they try to run with you. We see a lot of uh, a lot of spread. Uh, people attack us with a, a two. Two one two, putting a guy on a high post, and then uh, what we call a shell look, and then they'll go one four and try to back cut us. Uh, but you know, here's the the thing that I've always told our guys, and one of our, uh, I was talking to one of my former players of the night, and he was laughing about it. We tell them that if other team scores, you know, we ain't got time to hang our heads, and if we score, we ain't got time to have a pep rally, uh, and one of the things that we've always been with our guys, you know, we're going, we tell our guys we're going to get a hundred. Okay. That means they got to get a hundred one to beat us. So they got to shoot 50 layups. Uh, and, you know, of course, you know, that always doesn't work that way, but that's, that's kind of what we, uh, that's kind of what we harp on. So were you always fast break or did you kind of, did you just morph to it, or did you play? Did you play conservative, and then you just made the jump, or were you kind? Of, did you always love transition basketball? I I played in a system in high school. Uh, we played slow, and uh, you know there's a couple of schools. I mentioned Coach Carter at Scottsboro the other night. Always always had a great respect for Coach Carter, and um, I, I guess we kind of just kind of metamorphosed into it. You know, we uh, start out, like I said, we were just half court man to man. Of course, I had a 6'10 center the first year I coached. And so we, you know, he couldn't run very good. So we go, we kind of just uh, walked it down and, and tried to get it into him. And then we got a little faster and a little faster. Uh, the mid eighties, we were, uh, I, I really believe that we'd have had the system in and the three point line in the mid eighties, uh, a couple of those teams would have would have averaged close to 100. Uh, but yeah, I get yeah. I've I've always wanted to play fast. So you put it in in '88. Is that when you started? '88, '88. Yes. And how long did people know? How long was Westhead running it for? Was he was he was in '88? Was he with Loyola? He had just gone to Loyola. He, uh, uh, he had got, I think, I don't remember if it was 87 or 88 was his first year. Uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure he was there for a year because coach seen him at a summer clinic and, uh, brought it back to me. Uh, uh, he just got let go by the Lakers and, uh, you know, landed there at Loyola. I'd never heard of Loyola Marymount before. I'd never heard of Paul Westhead before, really. You know, I knew he was, you know, just other than, Watching him coach the Lakers a little bit, yeah. But he has he has had a, such a profound effect on my career that it's just uh, you know I think we all look back and and, and see people that really earmarked uh, our careers and Coach Westhead is in the in the top three in mine. Yeah, innovators is that what you said? Uh, well, you know, just just uh, somebody. Uh, 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 I've looked up to, you know, a lot of times when I get real tight and I'll, uh, you know, maybe get nervous or get to thinking about something, I, I say to myself, what would Coach Westhead do? What would Coach Carter do in this situation? And uh, I know what both of them said, let them play. Get out of their way and let them play. So you, in 88, I mean, we talk about this a lot in the calls on the clinics that we've had, and you've been on a, quite a few of them, I believe, as well. So about the administrative support of it. Um, did you go and, and talk to them or do you have any advice for us young coaches that are going to put it in? I mean, I know everybody, I think it's wild that we have to 
go tell somebody we want to play a different style of basketball because we wouldn't do that if we wanted to run flex. So I just think it's, but, but it is a different style and it's, but what you do is a little different than the Grinnell version. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but if someone's going to run LMU, do you think they need to go to the admin or is it just, you're just playing fast? Well, I had a, I had a distinct advantage because my principal was my elementary basketball coach. He had, uh, and he hired me straight out of college. And I was at a school that had never had a lot of success. Uh, matter of fact, I think the school was seven years old when I went there. Uh, and we had been somewhat successful. We'd won a couple of county championships, a couple of Sand Mountain tournament championships, a couple of area championships, but it was just, we, we just never could get over the hump. And, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't mention to anybody. I just went in and done it. I figured if they was going to fire me, they, you know, like I said, I was ready to quit anyway. <laughs> um, so, you briefly told me this Wednesday night. We had a we had a round table that we were talking. You were there, and we started talking about LMU being sustainable at high school over the Grinnell system. Um, why did right. you choose? I know you said that you liked a lot of things about Grinnell, but for the people that weren't there, can you tell them why you like the LMU for high school better than the Grinnell style of play? I think you can run. I think you can run LMU with eight players. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I guess I've still got enough old school in me. I want my best player on the floor for 28 minutes a game. Uh, you know, and, and I, I see the, I see the advantages of the Grinnell system. I just, uh, uh, it's kind of like, I guess, what we've been taught. I would not feel comfortable doing Grinnell. I mean, I just, uh, um, I, I, it's just a personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think you can play, like I said, I think you can play uh, LMU with uh, <clears throat> eight guys and then find you uh, two that uh, will just go in there and uh, um just have have, to have my two dogs walk in here with me. Uh, find you two more that would just, uh, uh, you know, go out and play really hard. And, uh, and and I don't know. There's no really rhyme or reason why I like LMU better. I guess I'm just comfortable with it. Okay. Um, what what do you say to most people that I've heard that I've talked about LMU is that. They believe you have to have a little bit better athletes than you do to do the Grinnell. I mean, is that falsity because they saw a Hank Gathers and a Bo Kimball for a Loyola Marymount and those guys were uh, all American studs. I mean, I mean, obviously athleticism, the athletes, better players help you win in any system you're going to play in. Um, is it needed right. more for the LMU style than, than, than any other style, or do you think that's that's incorrect? I, I think in the LMU style, and uh, I've been fortunate. Most of the time, I've had a couple of a uh, of pretty good players that could that could shoot the ball, or you know, were, were really good scorers. Um, now I, I think I think you know, and it's like we said the other night. I don't care if you're running flex or you're running Princeton or whatever, you know, the better players you got, the better you're going to be. Sure. But I, I, I just think, I think the most important thing in the Marymount system is not so much the offensive end of it is, is the defensive end. Uh, I think you got to put that constant 32 minutes of pressure on and then, uh, figure out a way if, if you got a Bo Kimball or you got a Hank Gathers or you got a Jeff Fryer, you figure out a way to get them some shots in the half court because you're going to get them in full court. Um, and then we go, we, we, we send, uh, uh, we don't have a designated guy back. I mean, I mean, we do, 
but it's not like okay we're going to send our point guard back every time we we teach crash in the glass i mean we pound 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 and uh, uh we even if we give up a run out we stand up in front of the crowd and tell our point guard or whoever that, that's that's our bad right there that's my bad um, you know but we 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 want them going to the glass uh, we figure we're going to give up we're going to get more and you know sometimes that old uh raw bone kid that ain't got a whole lot of talent uh is a better offensive rebounder than your uh superstars are so to say do you have any uh system numbers like a grinnell style or do you just play do you guys have some goals or anything that you're trying to do in a game <clears throat> well we i used to uh I used to have the, you know, I want to get up a hundred shots and wanted to get X amount of offensive rebounds. Uh, and, and I've kind of stole this, uh, from, from Grinnell. Uh, we want to rebound. Uh, uh now, now my son wants 20 offensive rebounds a game. Uh, I say, uh, you know, I, I tell him we want, we want to go get, we want to get 33% of the, of our misses. We'll, we'll get one out of three. Uh, Pressure-wise, we want to turn you over. We want to turn you over between 15 and 20% of the time. Okay. You know, whatever, how many, ever how many possessions that might be. So you do a percentage. Uh, and, and, you know, to, to start with, I wanted to get X amount of threes up. Um, I know I got, I got, I've got a really good friend that I coached against over here. We go to play him, and uh, we're we're pretty good that year. We went 27 and, and four, and uh, he comes out in a two-three zone, and he's got all five guys standing in the lane. And uh, we shot that night. We shot the ball 75 times, and we shot 66 threes. Um, the only shots that we shot uh, that that wasn't a three ball was on the uh, 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 offensive rebounds or uh, uh, turnovers. And I asked him after it was over, I said, Brent, why, why don't you play as a two three zone? I mean, we, we beat him about 25. And he goes, we knew we couldn't stop both of them. And we uh, was taking the chance that you weren't going to hit the three ball. So, uh, but, you know, we, we want to now – Instead of X number of shots, we want to get 25 more shots a game than you do. Uh, that kind of plays in. If you're going to come out and hold it on us a little bit, uh, you know, uh, and we don't get we don't get uh, 100 possessions a game or whatever we average, uh, you know, if we if we just get 80, it's kind of hard to get uh, the same amount of shots up in 80 as you do 100. So we're we we look at your shot chart. We're going to talk with. We we figure if we get twenty five more shots up than you do, and get to the line ten more times, we'll get to the free throw line ten more times than you do. So, if any if nobody knew about Loyola Marymount and Paul Westhead, what what resources or what advice would you give them to go seek out? I mean, I I know he has old videos out. And <clears throat> I mean, I know you went right. I to, would. I know you went right to the source. So that that was that's what you that's what you did. Uh, I, that's I would buy Coach. The, the 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 video was still available. Basketball in the fast lane. I have. I would get it. I would also get. I would also get the one at Shoreline College where Bo uh, helped for a couple of years. They've got basketball in the fast lane. He's got a couple more drills on there that uh, uh, Coach Westhead didn't have, and it's it's basically the same thing. Uh, I would uh, uh, get the uh, I, I don't even, I can't I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember the fast name of the book that is he uh, still got the Marymount that? system. Is both uh, no 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 uh, the coach that was there quit so Bo will. Uh, uh, as far as I know, Bo's not helping there. Uh, you know, Bo tried to get the Marymount job this past time it come open. And, uh, but, uh, you know, they're, they're welcome to call me 
at any time. I'll give them everything I've got. Um, uh, and and I, again, I don't think it's so much what you do as what you emphasize. Everything we do ends up being a fire break drill. Uh, if we're running shell in the half court, uh, my, and, and my son he likes to pass it around, you know, and do all that. And I hate it. I tell him, I say, hey, shoot it. pass it a couple times. Let's shoot it. Let's run down, come back, and we'll do the shell on the other end of the floor. But everything we do, we, we try to turn into a fast break drill. Did you just start with cycles? Is that how you installed it? Or how, how, how would you install the element? We did. First thing we do, the first day of practice, even and we'll do it this time, even with we got 10 guys back out of 11 off of 19 and 9 team. And uh, we got we got about four guys that can fill it up. But we'll start out. We'll put them down there, and we'll either circle the wagons or we'll just put them on the baseline in a certain spot, and we'll blow the whistle, and they've got to sprint to the spots. Uh, two going to the right side, three going to the left side, four rim running, uh, five trailing, and one pushing down the side. We'll do that without a basketball. They just got to they got to sprint and get there. And no matter how fast they get there, we tell them it's too slow. Uh, and then we'll put the second group and have them do the same thing. Uh, we'll do that for a while, and then we add a basketball with it. And then we we go over, you know, we'll 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 get the ball in one's hand and say, okay, this if we're coming down the floor, this is one, this is what you're looking for. Uh, and then we'll say, okay, you can't pass the ball ahead. So, you know, here's your read. You know, if nobody stops you, you're going to the rim. If they, if they stop you, you're pulling up. You know, then you're reading the two man. How does how does they play? Do they play off our two guy? Do you kick it or do you keep it? All right, if they how 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 are we going to play if they if, if the defense does this? We we do a lot of that. Uh, but the main thing that I think the main things that we do is uh, we do a lot of five on three, five on two. Five on three, five on four, five on three, five on one, something like that, and and let them go four or five cycles up and down the floor without stopping them. And then uh, uh, we, uh, I, I think the way you really teach the break is you actually play five on five. Uh, uh, now I'm not saying we go out there and pitch it up and just scrimmage, but we'll. We did, I, I stole this from Coach Olson out of Arizona. He called it up and back. Mm-hmm. And uh, we work – I love it because we work on our rep handles with it. Uh, but we'll give uh, – say we'll give the, the blue jerseys the ball. Uh, they'll attack the white in a half-court situation. Uh, score or miss or whatever, white's going to fast break down. Uh, and then blue's going to fast break back. And, of course, we're going to press on maids or – and we try to press on misses, but it's kind of hard to press ourselves, really. And uh, uh, then we'll flip it over, and then White's going to attack Blue, and we do that. We spend uh, we spend fifteen twenty minutes a day doing doing that uh, every day, uh, you know. And and while you know uh, Cole may be uh, uh, he may be coaching the White team, I may have the Blue, or he may be offense today, and may be defense, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we just feel like we're getting a whole lot done in a, uh, a little bit of time. A lot of times, too, we practice our JV and varsity at the same time. That's really good because you can run a – you can run five on five and go down, back, down, back, get them off, go your JV, do the same thing, then run your varsity back on there. And they're, they're getting a little bit of breathing time, too, while we're, while we're doing that. But we feel like we can practice – we feel like we can practice 20 kids uh, easily. And that was, iron and that was my next question because I told, I remember you saying on Wednesday, last Wednesday night, that you don't like really more than ten on your roster. So I was just going to ask how you did practices if you had JV practice with you. So well, we, uh, you know, we we got, we'll probably dress twelve, thirteen this time, uh, but again, those those three guys. Uh, we we try to be completely honest with them, you know, and and we 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 call our kids in and, and tell them, you know, hey, 
uh, you the man. You 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 know we we need you to uh, we need you scoring twenty twenty five. We need you scoring ten fifteen. We need you getting twelve rebounds. And by the same token, we'll we'll tell them, hey, you know, uh, if you want to stay on the team, we're going to keep you. But you know, right now you're the eleventh guy. If you want to play, you better be go out there and beat somebody in practice. What's the toughest part to install with LMU? I think the uh, the toughest thing is the kids think they're playing hard when they're not playing hard. If that makes sense at all, um, and I know one thing Coach told me when we put the when we started doing it, he said everybody says they want to play fast. Mm-hmm. We want to play at breakneck speed, uh, you know, and that, that's one thing I remember Coach told me. He said, speed is balance, and we used to have that uh, on the back of our practice jerseys. Uh, the faster you go, the more balanced you are, he said. Uh, but but the toughest thing is to get them to to play hard all the time and then – realize that when they're tired they need to come out and get a breather we we let we got a we got an agreement with our guys if they come out on their own uh, if they signal they need a breather and they come out they can put themselves back in if we take them out you go in when we want you to do you have a set substitution pattern like send two like do you have like three guys rotating at two spots or, or do you guys have it figured out or you just play it by feel? We, we just kind of, some years we have, uh, one year when we were out here at Dade County, uh, we had, we had three guys that come off the bench were better than three starters, but the guys were seniors and they'd been with me and they'd went through the, the lean times and we'd got it turned around and they were, they played so hard. They were such good kids they were great leaders, but the three the three guys coming off the bench, our six, seven, eight guys, uh, much better offensively than than the the three seniors that played. At the at the five minute mark of the first quarter, those three guys just got up and went in. They knew they at the five minute mark they were going in, and uh, uh, but you know right now we're kind of we're we're so blessed at North Sand Mountain that we've got. Out of our ten guys that we're going to throw on the floor, we've got eight guards. That that and probably six of those guys are point, could play point guard if they had to. So we, you know, uh, we're going to we we, we kind of a lot of times before the game we'll sit down and say, okay, you know, Russ is playing really really well right right now. You know, uh, Luke's playing really well. Derek's struggling a little bit. Let's uh, let's try to keep. Uh, Let's try to keep Luke and Russ in the game when Derek's in. Uh, you know, we, we kind of go go at it that way. But, you know, game gets to going, you, you know. Uh, you've been in long enough to know, too, that you got a guy that might not have scored 10 points in the last month. He gets hot. You, he, he love to get on the road. Uh, we, we want to keep a hot hand in the game as long as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the biggest criticisms that you guys face every year with running popcorn ball? Uh, you playing popcorn ball? I, I didn't get a, I didn't get a, I didn't want the job, but a buddy of mine wanted me to apply for one of the bigger jobs, and I actually went and talked to them, and their uh, uh, AD said it was popcorn ball. We didn't want to play that. Uh, we don't play any defense. Uh, you know, all you're doing is running and shooting which, you know, that's basically all we are doing. But, um, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's mainly the, the, the old conventional, uh, we ain't never done it this way. That ain't the way you're supposed to play basketball. So we, I tell our guys when people start talking that trash to them, that's a compliment. We, we want to, if they start worrying about us, they can't, you know, they ain't worried about themselves. Why don't more high school teams run Loyola Marymount, in your opinion? I think it's unconventional. Uh, I think uh, 
and, and I don't know that I would have when I first started, but when I when I started, I was, uh, you know, I've been I've been doing it for like uh, twelve years. Really didn't care what anybody said. I think it's a. Uh, uh, I, I think a coach told me said the first thing I need to do is go buy me a good terry cloth towel, one of the big fluffy ones. And every time I wanted to scream at somebody for something to just put the towel around my face and scream into it all I wanted to. Um, I think it's uh, kind of a just uh, maybe I don't I don't even I know it's going to sound wrong maybe an ego thing. Uh, of course now it's the opposite for me. We're going to run. I mean you know we're we're I, I hear people say well what if you got a big six seven six eight center and it can't run well we're still going to run on misses. And the steals, you know, on ref handles, he's going to touch it every time down. But I, I just think it's, uh, again, it's not a conventional uh, thing. Most people have not been around it. Uh, I know when my son, uh, he was my assistant for, he played for me for, started for me for four years, and then he played uh, my assistant coach for uh, six and a half years. And uh, the newspaper asked him when he uh, got his first head coaching job, he said, are you going to run the same stuff your dad does? He said, I guess I have to. I don't know nothing else. Um, so, you know, it's just I, I think it's what you're brought up in and what you believe in and what you're comfortable with. And most people are not comfortable doing this. So next one is, is why hasn't anyone really tried it since West Ted was at LMU? I think for the same reasons. Um, now, in North Alabama, where we're at, mm -hmm. almost everybody plays fast up here, and especially in, the, in our classification. In the 1, 2, and 3A classifications, uh, it's, you know, it, it's not uncommon for uh, – it's not uncommon to see a scores uh, 103 to 97. I mean, that, that's just, you, you know, uh, if you're not scoring, y'all, hey, you, you know, if if you just score 75 points, you, you, you're probably going to get beat. That's, the college teams there where you're at are doing it now, too, with Musselman and um, Bruce Pearl. They're both, well, playing, they, they're, they, both playing, they're both playing up tempo. Coach Pearl is the best thing that's happened to basketball in the state of Alabama ever. Uh, you know, not not just because I'm an Auburn fan. Yeah. And Coach Oates, uh, I'm, I'm not a Bama fan at all, but Coach Oates has got uh, on that other side of the state over there. He's got uh, <laughs> he's got folks excited, and I tell you, Coach Barnes, and uh, I mean they some quality coaches in the SEC. You know, you got Coach Barnes, I got Coach Crane, Coach Cal. Uh, you know. Just uh, talked about and, you know, party in a basketball country, not just football. Right, and you know, Coach Kennedy just got the UAB job, so you know, uh, oh, wow. I, you know, John Schumann is the UAH coach that was UTC for uh, several. I mean, there's some quality basketball coaches in the state of Alabama that uh, that, that do a tremendous job and, and do it not only coaching the game but promoting the game. So conditioning of it, you, you got to be in peak condition. Do you guys do a lot of out of or preseason and out of season conditioning with your players, or you just do it on court? How do you guys approach it? We do uh, four weeks. Uh, with for every, what our starting day to practice is, we back it up four weeks, and uh, our kids, uh, our kids here at Dade call it Hell Month. And uh, we, uh, we 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 run them. I mean, we run hills. Uh, we carry sandbags up hills. We do, you know, we do court sprints. We run stadiums. We run stairs. We do everything we can think of as hard as we can go for about thirty minutes a day. Uh, we don't we don't do a lot of distance. Uh, you know, everything's pretty much uh, sprint. Uh, ladder type things, uh, but we we uh, for about a month we try to mash them. But then we tell them uh, that you know after we get started practice we never run after practice. Uh, 
Cole and I both tell them if, if we ever run, it's because we're pissed. Practice, is it two hours, hour and a half? Do you guys go, how long do you guys go? We probably start out going two hours to begin with, uh, especially if we've got the JV in there with us. Uh, the first first three or four weeks when we're teaching, when we start playing, we cut it to an hour and a half. By Christmas, we're going about an hour 15. After Christmas, we'll go about, well, I, I, the actual practice time, we keep them in there because we're going to spend a third of our time shooting the basketball. Okay. If we practice an hour and a half, if we're going to be an hour and a half, we're going to spend 30 minutes on shooting drills. Uh, in the offense or catch and shoot? Or are you doing 100 threes? Are you doing stuff out of the out of one of your spots? We do we, we do it all. Uh, you know, we, we may come in today, and uh, uh, one of our favorite drills is we're going to put uh, – uh, we call it minute shoot. We're going to put 10 minutes on the clock. You're going to shoot for a minute. And I rebound for you. And then I'm going to shoot for a minute. You shoot for a minute. I shoot for a minute. And then we, uh, then we may do three minutes at a time like that. Uh, we may tell them they got to make, uh, uh, you know, you got to make 50 threes, uh, 10 at a time. Uh, but we're, we're going to get a, we're going to try to get a bunch of shots up. Cole's got a, a notebook full of drills that uh, shooting drills that can keep uh, uh, everybody busy for for two weeks. Uh, well, we try to do something different each day so they don't get too uh, bored with it, I guess, or too uh, lackadaisical. How long in a typical season, like if it's your new group that hasn't been with you, or your you got a young group? How long? would you expect for the, to maybe for the light bulb to click on with the speed and the tempo? Is it, is it halfway through the season, a few weeks? When, when did you guys start to see like the aha moments with your team? I think we see some immediately. Uh, uh, if it was a whole new team, if you, you were going into a new program, when I went to Fort Payne, uh, they had the most they had scored. They averaged they had averaged fifty seven points a game uh, the year before, fifty five the year before that, fifty three the year before that. First night we got ninety seven, and uh, the best player I had uh, was uh, three for uh, nine from the free throw line, and he shot like ninety percent for the rest of the year. So with a with a bust of the dollar that first night. And, uh, you know, the kids just, wow, this crap works, don't it? And, uh, but I, I think you're going to see some of the, some of it immediately. Uh, now, uh, do you guys own all the state records? Co- Pardon me? You own all the state records for points in a game? Uh, made? We actually don't own it for, uh, points in a game. Uh, we had 147. Another team got a, Another team that, uh, well, let's just say they played a cupcake and scored 152. We got 147 against a good team. Um, but uh, we all know. No overtime, straight 32 minutes? No. 32 minutes. Wow. Uh, uh, well, we, we averaged uh, 111.8 and uh, 93, and that's that's state record. 111.8, that was? Yeah. Yes. So, what's the most any players ever scored in a game for you guys? Can you remember? For me, uh, uh, fifty-two. Last year we had a kid, and he's a uh, and, and somebody if they listen, and I need to get on this kid. He's a six six two and a half guard. He had sixty-three for in a son. regulation game. So this was last yes. season? Yeah, last season. Uh, Cole had 47 in the finals of the county tournament one year. That uh, He still holds the uh, county tournament record for that. Uh, but, uh, Did you, you know, win? and it's been, yes. You've won, you've won a championship? Yeah. Hey, uh, what you, what'd you ask me? You guys ever won a section, out of. section or a region championship running the system? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, we've won, I think, nine area champs, which oh, in Alabama they call them areas. Okay. I think it's nine or nine or 11, something like that. I don't know. So last question I have for you, Coach, is someone wants to put it in. What advice would you give them? First of all, you got to sell yourself on it because it, I, I think it's something you either got to do or you don't do. You can't, you know, you, you can't halfway do it. Uh, you got to sell out and then study, watch game film. Uh, don't be afraid to turn some players loose. Um, like I say, if, if they want to uh, call me, uh, I'll be glad to talk to anybody one-on-one. I'll send them everything I've got. But I, the, they, if the coach is not convinced – going to be hard to convince the kids going to be hard to convince the administration going to be hard to convince the fans i used to at one time had a little packet and, I, and, and reasons to run the system and one of the things i put on there fans are going to love it in parentheses i put after they get used to it if <laughs> if our people at north sand mountain uh if we went in and tried to play slow they would probably try to fire us i mean i'm seriously they 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 uh we beat somebody uh, one night, like, it was like 69 to 52. And one of our old heads there, that was there the first time I was there, he come by and he goes, Gee, we got to get better offensively. We ain't very good, are we? So, you know, uh, but but the, I, the, the coach has got to convince himself. He's got to sell himself first. He's got to buy in. Gotcha. Well, I want to wish you and your son good luck. Um, is there any outlook for the season for you guys? Have they put a calendar together in your area, or have they come up with what you guys are going to start? Alabama is start as of today is they started football practice. Alabama is starting on time as as of right now. Uh, what that does, you know, of course the 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 state guidelines have said we'll make adjustments as we go. What that does to us as far as basketball, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, they let us uh, practice the month of June. Uh, and so, you know, we're – right now we're on go. Well, well, good luck to you guys. I hope you guys have a great season, and I appreciate you coming on the podcast with me. You're very welcome. And uh, like I say, if anybody uh, has any questions, feel free to give them my phone number. Will do, Coach. Just tell them to make sure they text me first because I usually don't answer a phone number if I don't recognize the number. No problem. And thank you for what you're doing, man. I appreciate you, Coach. Thank you for joining on this episode of the Basketpedia podcast with Coach Glenn Hicks was fantastic going over LMU, the system, Paul Westhead's famous offense. On our next episode, stay tuned for Joe Hay. That'll be our next edition of the Baskopedia podcast.